<laughs> oh my god, I haven't seen you in forever. I know, I know. How, How are you? you? I'm good. How have you been? You look so pretty. Oh my god. Well, thank you. I I have a ring light. I mean, it makes things wonderful. Oh yeah, I should have used my light. I have to do a self tape, like in the, it's in the other room, the whole setup. I mean, I'm sure like, I feel like it's always set up for you, right? Like when you, cause you have so many auditions and things like that. It's not even like that I have that many, but it is like, it's basically like producing a short film every time you get an audition. <laughs> I mean, like you have to like, I mean, for me, I, I don't know how, I think other people sort of just like do it. I just like, I, I just can't do that. I'm not do you like it better than actually going into a room and auditioning? Because I feel like I would love it better than that. Oh, I love going in. Really? Yeah, it's like a performance. Oh my God. Oh, I used to audition and whenever I would go in, it would give me such anxiety. So like putting myself on tape, you could, you could redo it a thousand times. Yeah, and I do. And that's why I feel like it just destroys my day. Oh. <laughs> Wait, I, I, didn't, I don't think I, did I know that you were an actor? Um, I feel like you knew because I went to the stars of tomorrow with Wendy Taubman. I mean, yeah, I, I thought maybe that was just, I just thought that was like, you know, a fun side thing as you were a kid. Not fun, but. No, I, I envy you and I'm jealous of your career because you're doing everything I wanted to do in my career, but it's fine. I'm not like, you know, we're going to be fine as friends, but just so, just so people know, because, you know, I've, I have a lot of listeners on this podcast, like maybe five at the time. Okay, great. <laughs> Lindsay Kraft here is an actress, you're a singer also, but you've been in everything. You've been in everything from like Modern Family to The Ranch to Getting On, which was a great show. You oh. are a recurring on Grace and Frankie. You're everywhere. And we met on a show called, which nobody knows, but it's so sad because it was such a good show. Was you know, it's, And it's nowhere to be found. You can't find it anywhere. No, it's like one of those like good shows that they're like, you know what? We're not going to let anyone watch. But I was like trying to, like someone was saying, Did, is there any, you know, multi-chem, you know, footage of her? I'm like, I was the lead of a, of a CBS sitcom and like no, nobody knows and I can't find the footage anywhere. It doesn't exist. I can't even have it on my reel. It's so weird. I mean, like, I feel like somebody has to have dailies somewhere somewhere maybe i've <laughs> i have i think what, the only thing that i have from that show is like I'm a video class. Of down guys like sleeping while they were doing that quartet scene i don't know if you remember oh, it i do and so they were doing this wonderful quartet and then i just like zoomed in on on jimmy the sound guy and he was like fully passed out and i'm like oh my goodness he's gold <laughs> i'm um, just I like haven't thought about the show in so long and I just remember it like there are so many good memories so many good episodes like that episode where I sing in the in the gospel choir well that's the episode I think we met I wanted to talk to you about it. I think okay. that that's the that is the week where I think we actually like connected the dots because I, I don't you could correct me if I'm wrong because like I, my memory is like weird but there were three things that could have happened okay one I remember you saying, God, I wanted to be in a gospel choir when I was growing up. I'm like, oh, so did I. And you was like, yeah, I watched Sister Act. I'm like, so did I. And that was one thing where I'm like, is that where we connected? Because we both were like, shit. And that I remember that episode. Or you were talking to somebody about how you grew up in Long Island. And I was like, where? Like, where did you grow up? Like, and you're like, Jericho. I'm like, what? I'm like, I, I grew up in Syosset. So I don't know where, like where that was. And I just remember you being like, do you know Scott Tesla? I'm like, of course I know Scott Tesla. And <laughs> That's I my association to, to Syosset, you know? Well, I texted Brian immediately, which was Scott's best friend growing up. And I, while I was sitting next to him, I'm like, Brian, do you know who Lindsay Kraft is? And she, he was like, yeah, the model who dated Scott. I <laughs> That's so funny that people knew me as that, which is like, so not something I'm connected to it at, at, at all. Like something that I don't associate in my life. Well, I mean, it's on, like it's on like your resume of things. I mean, you were. I guess, and I think it. What's weird, I think, is like you know, growing up, it was like from Jericho, Jamie Sigler, who's a dear friend of mine. Um, she was the actress, and I was the model. But like in my mind, like I never really felt like that. Like so, it was just like 
sort of something that I didn't like talk about, sort of like did it like secretly and just like in between stuff. And then, but now that I think about it, I feel like you remember me from high school, you'd be like, oh yeah, I was the girl that modeled, you know? I mean, this was crosstown gossip, I guess. Yeah. <laughs> then there, there was more connections because then we, then you were saying how your best friends were coming to visit and you were best friends with Hallie Schreiber. And I'm like, wait, she was my best friend growing up. We went to Montessori school together, which That's I that I mean, remember. That, yeah. I mean, all the things that you're saying, like every single connection is like, it totally checks off. Like, I think it was all those combined, like, must have been. Think, and, right. And I think it was the gospel choir week. I really do. That's so funny that I just brought that up. Yeah. Yeah. And then there was, well, then there was Stars of Tomorrow, which we could actually get into because for me, I know that you didn't go, but I know that you wanted to go. So and, badly. Right. And so I went and I know that Jamie went, we were never in the same class, but everybody knew who Jamie Lynn Sigler was because her headshots were all over the studio. Right. But if you were going to that school, you were never going to be as good as Jamie, but you had to try to live up to Jamie. So <laughs> like, I remember trying to sing and Wendy be like, what are you doing with your mouth? I mean, I'm traumatized. And yeah. like, I thought she was the end all be all. And she was a cabaret singer in Long Island. And that was top tier for us. That was it. All I remember is, I mean, I remember a few things, but I would be like, so all of my friends did it. Every, every single one of them, like they didn't even want to, I was dying to do it, but my parents couldn't afford it. And I was there. And I remember my, my mom saying like, that's just too much money. And also like, I'm not sure about that woman. <laughs> I hate, I hope that she's not watching. I mean, you know, her son, her son and daughter went to my high school. I'm sure. Yeah. Cause it was all oh, friends, friends with Mark. He's, they're both lovely. I mean, I don't, I don't even, okay. So I would go to these performances. They would do these recitals at the, in like the middle of the year and the end of, end of the year. And I would make my mom drive me. I was the first one there and I wait, I was the first one online. So I could just like, as if like, I wasn't going to get a ticket or something. I was just like nervous about getting in. And I would just like be in the front row, just like salivating, like being like, oh my God, like how amazing, like look at all my friends singing. And Hallie was actually really good, I remember. And my friend Jenna Grossman was great too. So I was looking at these people like that, that were my close friends and they were amazing. They were like, you know, Jenna was Annie and Annie in our, in our production. So it was like, and I was like, why do I feel like I can do this? But like, I just didn't express it in the way that I, I don't know. And, and so that I remember, and I remember in the middle of the performance, suddenly, like, I'll never forget this. Wendy just like stops whoever's on stage. And she says, this is a special tribute. And I just remember her sitting on the piano and singing a song, <laughs> just totally stopped the show. I could see her doing that. I could see her doing that. And I remember thinking, this must be really important. Like I, that, so it stuck with me. Like she must be important and this is important that they're stopping the show for this performance. For her, for her. Yeah, but I felt like it was important for everybody because like I didn't know otherwise. All I know is that I took all her classes and- Wait, let me just check my, I, I'm heating up oh, the soup. Too. I don't want it yeah. to burn, hold on. Okay. <laughs> you always have to check on the soup. Uh, yeah. Cause it, you know, oh, I'm, I'm having the celery one. I'm really excited about it. Oh, good. It's like a, it's almost like a, it's, a, I think it's better than drinking celery juice. I, it's, I, I, this is so up my alley, this one. I'm excited. Um, wait, so are you, so if I wanted to do like a cleanse, you, you could do like a week thing. I could order like a week thing. Yeah. So we do it. Like I did like a detox and reset box. Like, so when I was really sick, I wait now it's, now it's boiling hold on let me okay, okay. <laughs> <laughs> I'm, I'm sorry that I'm but be, be, like keep talking okay yeah. so basically I do this box where I put in recipe cards you know to give you like kind of a guideline a grocery list of like things that you could eat throughout the week if you're just trying to like detox yourself from like fine sugars and um, just processed food. And then like I give you my smoothie recipe, but then we also provide you with bone broth and soups and cookie dough, because I also think that even though you're detoxing or this and that, you still want a treat. You know, you still want some sort of sweet, or at least I do. 
I do. I mean, I can't live without a suite. I right. like, like I, all I'm thinking about is like, like Andrew, my partner and I are always like, well, what's for dessert? Like, <laughs> yeah, like that. Cause like dessert's the best part of the day for me. I'm going to eat it. Is it okay to eat the soup now? <laughs> Please eat the soup. Just don't burn yourself. There's so much steam coming out of it. Mm. Ooh, I love this one. This is right up my alley. Mm. I, I see. I like, I'm going to, I'm going to do one of those, those detox resets. I, I think I, and then you can sort of, I guess, can you just like add in vegetables on your own? Cause I don't think like soup would be enough for me. Yeah. So I, that's the thing. So I'm, I provide like recipes where you could like, I do like a quinoa tabbouleh salad. I do like a spring roll and I never say like limit yourself. Like the recipes I give are for like four or five servings. They would last you a whole week. So if you're hungry, eat, you're eating right. clean food, you're eating yeah. organic food. I know. Um, we also make those in the kitchen. So like, if you ever wanted it, you could order it as well. But I, yeah, like me, I need soup. I need croutons or an avocado. Like I need something, yeah. you know, a little no, like this. I just like, I, the only thing I don't like about a cleanse, I used to do like juice. I haven't done a cleanse in years, but mm -hmm. like, I remember the first one I did, I was like, it was like everything like shut down in my life. I was like, this is, <laughs> I'm going to, I just need to do. And it was like, at the time it was, it was probably like, $299 and I was like, it was so much money. And I was like, I can't believe I'm doing this. And it was at the, a place on um, Franklin and Beachwood. Like, I forget, I don't think it exists anymore, but it was like one of the first like cleanse places. Like, you know, that you, that like only the really cool fancy people were doing cleanses. Right. And I just remember like, it's like, it just like takes over my mind. Like it's like, it's it just becomes just about that. And I hate that. You know, like I sort of just wanted to be like, I just want to know that I have like, it's like having a private chef, I guess. Like what a- Yeah, no, for me, I, I, the reason like I changed it cause I was sick. And so it's so funny because people will be like, we have a lot of people coming in asking about weight loss. And I'm like, the reason I started cooking soup was cause I was emaciated and I had to put on weight. Right. So I, and it was the only thing that I could get down. And yeah. so then it became like, I love to eat. That's how I was raised. Like my mom is Cuban right. eat a lot. And so it was like, what can I eat that will make me excited? Like I love pasta. So we do a lot of lentil pasta dishes and wait. So, but did you come to LA and, and start to act too? Yes. I wanted to, my whole life, I wanted to be on Broadway. I think we talked about this because I, we talked about being in, wanting to do gospel choir, which I th think is really funny, but I, um, I wanted to come out. I did like second city and I like hated it. Okay. Like I'm not an improv person, mm -hmm. you know, like I, it always like freaked me out. Did you do it? Do you ever do the improv? Yeah. I love it. God. See, we're so different. Like I could see you being really good. Like you're like, I'm not like no, no. I got obsessed with it actually dur right during living biblically. Like I would like, on the weekends be taking classes three hours a day saturday and sunday oh like and then during the day before i'd come to set i would be like i was obsessed I, I spent so much money taking classes i just was like obsessed with getting better and there's people who were just amazing at it and i realized what it ultimately brought me to was this idea i have a lot to tell you but i'm writing a musical and i'm I love musicals yeah and so about like two years ago i discovered it was like kind of right before the pandemic, but I discovered that like, I have this gift that I didn't know that I had. And I started like hearing all these melodies and then started taking piano lessons, composing lessons, voice lessons, just to keep up with what was sort of happening. Yeah. And like songs just poured out of me. Like it's I been, it. it's been insane. Thank you. I, I And then, I like Linda Perry is producing. She heard one of the songs and she's pretty, I mean, we're, and I've been recording and we're producing this concept Dude, album. Yeah. That's insane. And also what is it about? What, like, what do we, what, I mean, I'm, I love musicals. <laughs> this is very exciting to me. I wrote an entire show based on like a community theater trying to do musicals. Like I love this shit. So okay. I want to know what so I, You will be really into it. Um, it's, it's, it's essentially about about relationships and um and and realizing how you grow from um each relationship that you're in and how the the people that we sort of are drawn to have qualities that are inside of us that have yet to be extracted 
And so as we go through life and meet people, like we realize who we really are. And so it's sort of a journey about that, about all of the people that have been in my life. So it's very, it's a very personal story, but it's, it's all about love and it's funny. And there's, you know, it, it, I'm, it's like my dream. And I, I, I can't believe, like, I always wanted to like sing on Broadway. I was like, and of course, like the only way it's going to happen is if I, that I'm writing it. You know what I mean? Like, Oh my God, no, I, I, love, I love everything about this. This is super exciting. Thank you. I'll send you a song. I'll send you a song or maybe I'll play a song when we're in at some point in this podcast, <laughs> if you want. I mean, I mean, a dinner and a show. This is fantastic. I have no, to, I, I was doing like Zoom shows and then I sort of stopped because like now I'm writing the book and the, the book I'm writing with Andrew, my partner and um, but I've written all the music and the lyrics and composed all of the songs. Like I've learned how to like compose. This is like so crazy. Like you don't understand. Like I had never played piano, never knew that how to write a song. Like I just sort of learned. But that's so exciting and fun and all those things. And P.S. If people don't know, Andrew is also an actor in a thousand things. He's I think in every show that I've done, he's always had some sort of part. In some sort of part, yeah. <laughs> Um, I'm just like, really, like, it is really strange, all of our connections. I know. Well, I and I'm just really, the Sue Bird one, I just think is, I, I didn't, it, I didn't even think that, but like she, Sue, I feel like I want you to tell Sue and ask her if she remembers. Me. I will. I, so the funny thing is, so I did a pod when you posted that. So just to give people reference, oh, yeah, sorry. you posted something about playing in CYO, which is a basketball league. Um, that was also like kind of all the towns, like close together used to play and like we either was CYO there was SBL like and then you played in high school and you talked about how you played against Sue Bird um during that time like when you guys were younger and Sue Bird like when we were younger played on all of those leagues like she played yeah. on all those leagues and I always say I played basketball and I, I did a podcast with her recently and I always say that I played basketball with her but I was never good enough I actually never played basketball with her. <laughs> if anything, I always sat the bench and I never made it to varsity because nobody, they, they didn't need any more people on her, on the team because she was the team. She was, uh, well, so in Jericho, I, so I was like the only Jewish girl on the CYO team or one of the only, like, and I just like loved it so much. And so I did any kind of extracurricular, you know, and I was, I was good. I was like, the, I was the point. I was like the star player on, you know, at the time. Like, I don't know, I just suddenly got really bad, but I will never forget because I, I like, I knew that there was this really good girl who was on the team and I was like, well, well, let's see, you know, like, and I just remember like looking into her eyes and being like, and just like, I also remember how kind she was like, that's what, and I, it was like such a, like an amazing moment, but I was like, this girl is so amazing. Like I will, there's no way I could ever be as good as this girl. But I remember having that thought and the fact is like, yeah, no one is as good as <laughs> she's so good. the best player. I mean, but again, you're living my dream and I don't know if you feel bad about it, but <laughs> I just feel like, I actually feel like you're saying like, I'm not sure you actually really want to want to act. Cause it seems like you don't like to improv. <laughs> you're like, I, I just feel like, it, I think that like, you're sort of like living your, the dream that you actually want. Like you have like, your own um, soup, like you have like your own business. I do. I love it. No, I, I don't like improv because I will tell you, like everybody had to lift like imaginary boxes in one of my classes and it like got a really aggressive, everyone was like grunting and I was like, I just couldn't do it. But I do, I always loved comedic acting. So like yeah. that was like, it's all in the timing. And I always felt like you either have it or you don't. And I loved, loved that. And so when I worked for Andy, I always got to fill in for producers, run throughs and things like that. And I, like, I just enjoyed that. I like dialogue, you know, like I like having, which we talked to me and Andy talked about once. It is one of the hardest things to do is to act with no dialogue. And so, you know, a featured extra actually has a really tough. So part. hard. I've, I've had like, like my, one of my, I forget. I, I was doing a movie with Colin Firth. Like this is years ago. It was my first movie. And, and he, he had one line in this one scene and he was do, and he was like, Lindsay, he's like doing one line is the hardest thing you'll ever have to do in a scene. One line, he's like, because there's so much pressure, you know, it's like, you have to sort of just like wait for your moment. And then he's like, it's just, you know, the more you have sort of the easier it is. 
but I find like, I, like, cause I notice like really good background acting. It's something that I always notice. Yeah, no, I mean, I love that. Like I always had little bit parts in like things that Andy did and I love, I love that, but I, I could, I'm not good at auditions. I get really nervous. I did a one woman show. I almost like peed in my pants, but I did it. Like I, you know, I got through it and, but I do love it. And I always admire people that can do it and have like that ease. And like, I do think if you're good at improv, it helps so much. I think so. But I, to, honestly, living biblically was the hardest thing I've ever had to do. Really? That was, I was so nervous. I started taking beta blockers. Like I'd never done that before. I would get so, so nervous. I mean, like it was basically like doing a play without rehearsal, like finding out what the script is on the Thursday night. Like I look, and I feel like everyone's so casual, like about like rehearsing and like running. I'm like, can we run it? Can we have, can we, can we rehearse actually all day instead of like everyone being like, we're going home early. I'm like, what is happening? What, why am I the only one who wants to like do this a thousand times? Cause I feel like to get it in my body to feel real and natural. And then I just had to sort of had to accept it and be like, okay, I'm enough. Like if I just say the lines, but I would get, they come in, you know, start changing the lines and they'd be like, do you want to do this one or this one? I'm like the shortest one, whatever the shorter one is like, don't even show the other one. Why? That's so interesting. You know that you made such a good point because if that, if that you did all the single camera and then to go to single camera to multi-cam that is a huge people don't realize that's like a huge kind of like shocker because it is you know and you were working with all weathered um um sitcom actors yeah actually you the cast was incredibly nice all of them were so nice so it's it was but like I can't imagine going from single camera to that because single camera you kind of have a little bit of space to breathe. You don't have the audience. You don't have like that, like, you know, you have to get it right every single time. There yeah. was that one scene. It might not have been funny to you, but it was like one of my favorite and funniest scenes. You were walking in, you were walking my in. Fr my friends were there and I could what? not. <laughs> well, you know what I'm talking about, right? So I have like a recurring nightmare about that. <laughs> Cause I had to switch it. Like I was upstairs switching it. But like either the bag or you got your jacket got caught and like nothing like your lines came out every time but it was like situational like your bag got caught one time your jacket fell like it just we had to do it over so many times and i'm like oh my god so they were sort of like they were talking about three different holidays or like the talk the something the something it was like i was making some some sort it was like a, it was a new joke that they put in there and I had to say it. And so then I was like, finally, like I got the words out and then my, the thing came off the chair. <laughs> like, oh my God. It was like, I was just like, oh my God, you're so close. So, and I felt so bad. But I mean, again, it was Jay, that, that was his name, right? Jay was so nice. Like he's so gracious. Oh, and, he, and, and they all messed up all, like I was like, David Crumholtz like messes up. And they, he doesn't care. Like he just, and I'm like, if I mess up once, like I, I rarely ever messed up. That was probably like the one time. Cause I'm like, I'm not, I can't, no, that's mortifying. Like every time I'd mess up, like I thought it was like the end of the world. I mean, you know? but you did great. I mean, wait, what was your first ever like acting job? Um, my first ever acting job was, um, was a law and order special victims unit. Law and order everybody makes their debut on Law and Order and then you become a big hit. You did it. You did, you did the thing. Cause well, technically, technically my very first job was a pilot, but I didn't even know what a pilot was at that time. Like it was a pilot that did not get picked up, but it was so good. I remember it was Paul Reiser and I played like an insecure model. I was like, oh, and I just remember going in and like, I was like, oh, and she was just like, she was like, do I look fat? She like, I think I look fat. Like, and I was just like, oh, I didn't understand that like, it made me realize like acting was really just like being yourself right. and that's what they responded to. And so like, it took so long to like realize, come around and realize that, that it's just like, people just want to see you be able to be in the flow and like fluid. And so <clears throat> it's what always, what I remind myself before an audition, just like people want to feel like they can just like trust and like, whew, like relax, you know, yeah. if you're up there and you're, cause like, you can just tell like if I'm, like coaching someone or or just watching something i could just tell that they're nervous or they're just like they're not in it they're not listening and they're not actually talking to someone you know right it's like they're thinking of the words they're thinking of what they have to say versus like conversing which is essentially what the dialogue is if like yeah you know what 
what the dialogue is, you could actually like answer. I say sometimes when I'm walking to set, I say, be a human, be a human, <laughs> listen and talk to someone. Like actually when you're taught, when you're telling them something, really tell them, don't yes. just like, just say the words, you know? Uh. My, so the whole premise of this, the soup switcher podcast that I'm doing is, tell me, I don't even know what it is. Well, great. So one, I love that you're eating the soup Two, It's <laughs> mainly because, you know, we work on set and, um, and if, I always talk about how like healthy choices and like, as an actress, like, you know, it, whether you maintain your weight or not, or you have to, or not, or like, if it's on your mind, it's become such an issue that I, across the board, when I have these things, we talk about how it's real set life is not healthy life. No, no. And, and so sometimes there are no, yeah, no, like if I had this, like, uh, this would be so helpful for me, honestly, like when I'm working, I was doing a job in Puerto Rico with like a couple, like last week, I just got back for two weeks and like the food situation was so horrible. Like I, I went, I, I we were staying at this like resort. And I couldn't even find food. Like all these places like shut down. There was like no food available or just like the whole, any kind of time I'm in a situation where there's like, I just can't get the food that I want. I find it so stressful and not even like, oh, cause like I'm trying to lose weight or whatever. It's just like, I just need to function to like, you know. Which is part like the, we, I, I talk about this across the board with everyone I talk to. It's like, there's not enough healthy options and there's not enough things that could give you like the proper nutri like nutrition that you need to like actually work the 12 hours that you're working. Oh. So like, yeah, I could eat Cheetos all day. Like, yeah. but I'm also like taking naps under my, my booth, like, at, but like, do you know what I mean? So that's kind of like where I want to like bring up the conversation and talk about it. And, and, and so people hear it that like, you know, we're, we need to be a little bit more on it. Like the more that you talk to people on set, the more that pe you find out everyone has a chronic illness. Everybody is like, you know, having some sort of like issue with their digestive system. And it's all because you're eating when you're being told. Yeah. You're not given like what you could possibly eat, or you have like five minutes to eat. I know. And then you're and running to set. I like to like really enjoy my food. Like that's something like I will like kind of work something around where I know like if I'm like my day is based around so that I can sit down and like have a meal. Like yeah. because it's so important to me. I enjoy it so much. And so I don't want to like rush that through. That's like a highlight of life for me. Oh my God, me too. I'm like, I like, I get excited for dinner. I still like, still oh, like, kid, me too. Are you, are you, I like, so do I every, I don't think I've never not been excited for dinner. It's I such know. a highlight. <laughs> <laughs> oh my God. It's so good. Um, so, good. <laughs> so yeah, but so basically that's kind of like why I like, like to talk to, but I also have been loving doing this because I like get to catch up with people that like I haven't seen in so long because I haven't I'm, I, I'm doing a show and think like in November but I haven't done one in so long so I haven't seen anyone and I miss everyone and like no, I know I totally grind that like you know I think when I moved to LA I just found like I'd never experienced sort of like having friends and then then they sort of disappear and that was like kind of really hard to swallow like I'd never had that in my life it's, my best friends are my best friends from Jericho, you know? I know, which I kind of loved that you have that. I, for me, you know, and I think a lot of crew feels this way and it's like why I love working at Warner Brothers. It's like, it's almost like college. So like you work on a show, it gets canceled, you get on another show and then you run into the same crew and you're like, who's working on this set? And da, da, da. Okay. It's constantly kind of overlapping and, and running into each other. It's hard. It's really hard, especially you're 3000 miles away from your family. So. I know. I know and it is. you're close with your family too. Yeah. Yeah. But they're not, yeah, they're not here. But when they, you know, they were so proud when they came, did you meet them when they, I didn't, I wish I did. I would, you know, like you're so, you, you, we grew up so, I know. Well, it's so weird. So I wish so I did. Weird. And you always, and you still like seem so familiar to me. Like even I, I think the first time I said, I was like, I know that girl and I know her name. Like, why do I know her? Cause I was the boy in every one of Wendy Talman, um, productions. And you're like, Oh, I recommend if she just puts on a baseball cap backwards. I've seen her in a show. Oh so. <laughs> Wait, so, so before we end this, cause I'm so, first of all, like we have to get together and go for coffee aside from our zoom, but I want to kind of, can you 
do, can you do a little song for us? Is that yeah, like, I think I can, hold on, let me just, is that like, am I good? Like, I don't want to air one of your songs before it's a thing, but what are you going to do? Um, I feel like, and we get a tour of your, you don't have that many listeners, right? <laughs> no, my mom and my dad, you know, okay. so um, is this too far? Okay. Wait, no, that's like influencer hype. It is. Yeah, I have to stress on the. No, I mean it was for it's for my audition, so hopefully, um, what should I sing? Let me think. Okay. Oh. Um, uh, hey, Andrew. Oh, I thought he would. I never know what to sing sometimes. Oh, I'm embarrassed now. Um, it'll be great. Uh, I just I just finished two songs, so I'm not. I don't think I'm ready to sing those because it's probably like. I'll sing this song called, this is called Radio Silent. Okay. Um.